So all you'll need is a jack, you'll need a four star, brakes and hardware, C-clamp, some brake grease, a 14 millimeter socket and a ratchet, some all purpose grease and some PB blaster. So just take your four star and just break all the nuts loose. You don't want to obviously take them off all the way. What you want to do is just loosen them. So once you get the car off the ground, you can just unscrew the bolts, make it a lot easier. Like so. So I'm using the jack that comes with the car. So just place it right there on the frame rail, right behind the wheel, maybe a foot back and just raise up the jack like that and get a nice good grip on the metal frame. So go ahead and take this part, put the hook through the ring and just turn it to the right. Now I sped up the process because nobody wants to see me raising a vehicle for a minute or two. The smartest thing to do is not wear latex gloves while raising the vehicle because they just get, they just kept getting caught in the the midst of everything and once you have the wheel high enough you're good to go now that the vehicle is supported since we cracked the lug nuts loose we could go ahead and just unscrew them all and now you can take the tire out Now we have access to our brake calipers and what we need to do is take off this bolt right here and this bottom bolt with the 14 millimeter. So take your 14 millimeter socket, put it on the bottom bolt and just break that loose. You might need to use PB blaster in some cases, but for me, the bolt wasn't rusted or corroded, so it came out very easily. And once the bottom bolt is out, you can swing the caliper open and you'll have perfect access to remove your brake pads. But in this case, we're gonna do a little extra, so we're gonna screw back in the bottom bolt and remove the top one as well. So I screwed back in the bottom bolt and broke loose the top one, and once they're both broke loose, you can unscrew them both at the same time, but you need balance on both of them. If you take out the bottom bolt, the front one, or the top one, I'm sorry, will just spin. So now with both bolts out, you don't want to put any stress on this brake line. So take the caliper and prop it on top of the rotor. It's really important. You don't want it to dangle from this brake line right here. You got to keep it supported. And I took out the front brake pad already. The back one will just slide out like that. And then the hardware is just stuck on there. It's clipped. So just go ahead and just poke around at it and it'll just come out like that. Off goes one and off goes the other. So now take your new hardware and put it identically to how the old hardware was. In some cases you might need to take a wire brush or sandpaper and clean out the inside of the caliper, but mine was really good like I said earlier so I didn't have to worry about that. Just make sure it's nice and snug, it should snap into place. So now take your brake pad, the ceramic part or the thicker part will go on the inside towards the rotor and slide it on in. I know the thought of doing your brakes could be scary, but brakes really only have one way of going in. It's a really hard job to mess up. And the back one as well, don't forget that. So what I like to do is take a little bit of brake grease and apply a thin coat on the outside of each brake pad. You never want to apply grease on the inside of the brake pad, on the ceramic part on the inside. That's not good, only the outside, just a th small thin layer. Should be good, and this is what it should look like. That's the back, and that's the front. Now since we have the caliper off, what we're going to do is we're going to take out these two rubber boots with the bolt attached. Just pop that one out and pop the bottom one out as well. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to grease those up. Now it's just a little precautionary maintenance, no big deal. These bolts and boots can get seized up in there. So just remove the boot, take some all-purpose grease, and just lather it up. And once it's nice and greasy, just take the boot, put it back on, and make sure the top of the boot reaches the top of the bolt like that. And once you're done, you can just shove it on back in. And same with the other. So pretty much the last thing we need to do is compress the pistons and the brake caliper. So they're compressed to fit the size of the old brakes. So if I take it and try to put it over the new bulky ones, it's not gonna fit. So this is where we use our C-clamp and we compress the pistons. So what I like to do is take an old brake pad and line up the C-clamp, the end of the C-clamp at the back of the caliper and the part that pushes through on the brake pad. And what you do, if I get my arm out of the way here in a second, like that, if it's um, if you can understand what I'm doing and you just tighten it. And what it's doing is it's pushing the pistons back into the caliper making more room so it could fit over the new brakes. So there's two pistons, so you wanna do one on each side. And once it's nice and snug, you can go ahead and loosen it. And now we can do the other side. And as you can see, when I'm tightening it, it's pushing the brake pad against the piston, pushing it back in its home, making room for the new ones. So the, there you go, nice and snug. So we can go ahead and loosen it now. And as you should see here, if I remember right, it should fit perfectly fine. Look at that, beautiful. And once everything's all lined up, you can take your two bolts and you can hand tighten both of them back into their homes. And once you have them in nice and snug by hand, you can pull out your ratchet. The best thing to do would be to torque them to spec. Unfortunately, I couldn't find my torque wrench, so I had to just make them nice and snug. Make sure you go back and forth. Don't just tighten the top one and then do the bottom. Back and forth, make them nice and even. And this is how it should look. The bolts are nice and tight. The boots we greased up earlier are nice and squishy. Everything looks solid, so let's go ahead and put the wheel back on. All right, so let's get the wheel back on now. And what I like to do is just take one bolt, usually tighten it by hand, but in this case, I had the four star next to me. So to speed things up, I just use that. Obviously you don't want to tighten it all the way just until you get a little bit of resistance. And then in a five star pattern, just go on to the next lug. So as you can see here, just tighten it till it seems good. Then we can do the next one. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up right here. And then of course the third and then the fourth and then the fifth. And once you have all five of them in, you want to go about two times each and give them, get them all a little bit tighter. As you see, when you put all five in, they'll be a little loose. And then just give them all a nice little snug until the tire doesn't move. You'll see at the end here, I shake it. And once the tire is not moving, you can go ahead and lower the vehicle. And now we can lower the vehicle. So instead of turning right, we just turn left and it lowers the vehicle. Now that we got the tire back on the floor, 
You want to do two or three rotations, giving each lug nut a good tight end snug. They're not tightened all the way, so you got to keep doing this until they're nice and hard. So as you can see here, I do, I do all five of them, and they move pretty easily. So what I'm going to do now is two more. Nice, strong tight ends right here. One, two. And shit, this was getting hard. This is probably the worst part about doing my brakes is using this damn tool right here. All right, they're all nice and snug. One more time just to be sure. Yeah, as you can see, they're not moving now, so I think we're good. And don't forget to pump your brakes, as you can see here. When I push it down all the way, it hits the floor. But do it a couple times, and it stiffens. That's the pistons compressing, and you're good to drive. Thanks for watching.